Hi, Maddie and Eli. Uh, Daddy here again. Um, I've managed to get out to the park, a, a different park, um, today. And uh, there's many more people around um, than usual, so it felt a little silly to keep wearing the mask. And besides, I have already had the coronavirus, um, so it seemed um, a tad redundant. Anyway, so today I thought I would regale you with a couple of funny stories from my time at the famous uh, Purcell School of Music. Um, of course, it goes without saying that if you take um, 150 uh, ridiculously talented kids and put them in one place together, um, you're going to have sex, drugs and rock and roll, or in our case, uh, sex, drugs and Beethoven, uh, because of course we're all classically trained. Um, so. My first story concerns um, the great and justifiably celebrated uh, mezzo-soprano Dame Janet Baker, who, um, at the time Purcell, that I was there, Purcell was in Harrow on the Hill. It moved a year after I left. Um, but she had a large house right next door to the Purcell School, although she wasn't connected to it musically in any way. Anyway, um, Sour Lady genius singer um, and as I said justifiably celebrated anyway um, it transpired that uh, she regularly used to complain to the local council about our orchestra and choir rehearsing um, uh, two things about this we weren't a normal school orchestra and choir we were the Purcell school orchestra and choir in other words we were better than most semi-professional orchestras and choirs Plus, we were not rehearsing out of hours. We were rehearsing during school time. So it all seemed a little mean-spirited to me. So me and a bunch of friends in an enterprising spirit discovered that if you went all the way down um, to the bottom football pitch and through these woods, which we used to call the Little Woods, um, you could sort of navigate to what was essentially the bottom of her garden. And it was an extremely long garden on an incline. So her house was at the top of the incline, and of course she couldn't see the bottom of the garden, uh, where her shed and all this stuff was, and gardening equipment and wheelbarrows and all that. Uh, so me and my friends promptly threw several large stones through her greenhouse. Um, so, of course, after that she would have had reason to complain if she'd worked out it was ours, and of course she must have done. Um, but yes, that's just one of those crazy stories. Um, and the other crazy story I wanted to say was concerning the Christmas tree. Now, this must have been 1994. Yeah, it would have been 94, I think. Christmas 94. So, every year, Purcell School would have a large Christmas tree delivered. How do I remember its height? Well, I've been pretty much the same height I am now, 6'1", uh, since I was 14. I haven't grown an inch since 14. Um, and this tree was well over a foot and a half taller than me, so I'd say at least seven and a half feet tall. Um, and it was delivered, it was a real tree, dropping pine needles everywhere. And in those days, Purcell was positioned in two beautiful buildings, um, which were uh, Oakhurst, which was the centerpiece, and Ravensholt. Now, Oakhurst was like the entrance to the school. It contained a headmaster's office and the staff room and sixth form common rooms and all those kind of things, including science labs and all that. Um, uh, Ravensholt was just down a little path, um, which has since been uh, uh, grown over. The path doesn't exist anymore. I once visited the school again uh, with your mum, in fact, before you were born. Anyway, um, Ravensholt was more teaching rooms and practice rooms. There must have been 70 pianos in that building. But anyway, yeah, so I'd just come back from a singing lesson. And of course, the singing lessons were held away from school in the boys' boarding house. Uh, this is because singers famously do not like being listened to having lessons because, of course, when you're doing exercises, that's not how you sound on stage when you sing um, professionally. You, sounding ugly in lessons is sometimes to be encouraged. Anyway, so I just come back from my instrumental lesson, as they were called, and I came into the school in the middle of what was, what was a, a lesson session. So there was no pupils around, everyone was in lessons, and all the teachers were teaching. And I'd walked up to go to the common room, and I turned the corner, and the Christmas tree was right there outside the headmaster's office. It had just been delivered. It wasn't there that morning. It had just arrived. And there was nobody there, and I kind of looked around, and 
I thought, wow, that's a rather nice tree, isn't it? And then, then I had another devil perched on the shoulder going, wouldn't it be amazing if this tree just disappeared? Mm. So anyway, um, I obviously thought, oh, come on. Um, you can't steal a Christmas tree, a seven and a half foot Christmas tree in the middle of the morning in a packed school of people. But then the old devil on the shoulder said, sod it. So I shouldered this Christmas tree, really heavy, and slowly set off. You couldn't run with it. Slowly set off through Oakhurst. No clear plan in mind, just trying to imagine how hilarious it would be if I could somehow make the thing disappear. So I get out of Ocus. Nobody's turned a corner. Nobody's come out of a classroom. Nobody. Get out of Ocus, go down the outside steps, through this kind of trellisy, wisteria -y bit, past the pond, kept going down. I thought, my God, I'm halfway to the Little Woods now. I had to pass the tea rooms, had to go round the gym. Then I thought, my God, I'm nearly at the bottom football pitch. Get to the bottom football pitch. Still nobody. I think this is incredible. No one from Orley Farm School, which is right there at the bottom of the old Purcell campus, Nobody there, not a single soul. And so I got the Christmas tree into the little woods. I kind of positioned it in between two other trees. So I knew it would be days and days before it was found, if it, indeed it was found at all. Um, and we found this hilariously funny, or at least I did. I had a rather absurd sense of humor, or a good sense of the absurd, maybe I should say. Um, both are things to be recommended. Although don't go stealing Christmas trees, that's generally not a good idea. Um, but I'd love to have seen the headmaster's face, given that it, it had just been delivered and he knew about it, it was outside his office. I would love to have seen his face when he came out of his office a few minutes later and the entire thing had vanished. And nobody had any explanation as to where it had gone or who had taken it or anything. And I just quietly smiled inwardly to myself. Um, boy, were we in the amazing business. Um, and what a billboard time we had. Um, I said I'd talk uh, later about what kind of amazing time it was, and it was the happiest time of my life, um, until, of course, you were born, and then you became by far the most wonderful thing that had ever happened to me. But to a certain extent, it is true that you're never truly as happy as those teenage years, which, of course, are full of angst and, you know, hormones and all this, you know, youthfully solemn sexual dramas and all this kind of stuff, and it all feels dreadful at the time. Then afterwards you realise how utterly wonderful it was. Um, but anyway, uh, I hope that's been entertaining today. And um, Daddy loves you always. And until next time, mwah.